John, just to get into the the series here, and we've now gotten a chance to yeah. see them a little bit, but how, how do you see Dallas as being built differently from Colorado? Well, Dallas brings the, the Colorado team, the Kraken ousted, uh, is not the same as the one that won the Cup. Uh, you know, a lot of things, you know, were, were in play there. There's some injuries. There's a little controversy regarding one of their top players that had a step out of the series for personal reasons, a suspension to a high-end guy within a series, a goalie that was just okay, and Philip Grubauer completely out-goaltended uh, Alexander Georgiev. So that's what happened there. This series is way different. You start in goal with Jake Ottinger. Uh, he might be the best goalie right now in the uh, playing, and uh, and Gruby's going to have to go save for save with that. Uh, their defense is balanced. It can be physical. It's got a high-end guy in Miro Haskin, and who's just as good as Makar is. He's used to playing 25, 30 minutes a game. He's dynamic with the puck. He had 72 points in the regular season. So you got to watch him closely. And then their balance with Pavelski, who had the four goals, but you bring him back in, and he didn't even play on the same line that he's accustomed to playing throughout the regular season with Rope Hintz and, and um, Jason Robertson. Um, if that happens tonight, that might present a matchup problem for Dave Haxtell. So this is a different animal. They they go hard at home. Uh, I think they were uh, in shock by being down for two after one period. That was kind of a wild first period. Uh, Dallas is uh, out of the shoot team at home, and that's what you can expect tonight. So like the Kraken had to do in Colorado, you survive it. A lot like the first period of Game 7 in Denver. You, you rely on Grubauer to do his thing. You kind of survive. You want to get out of it tied or maybe down by one if you're in the lead it's gravy uh and then they're in the driver's seat but the kraken by virtue of the overtime winning game one fellas it's house money time again the pressure's all on dallas tonight john this has been fun for us over the course of the year on just the the journey that this season has been i know we caught up with you early when the team was just red hot you talked about their just continuity and being able to spend time together and and you know went through a little tougher stretch in in march and then rebounded certainly in april i I guess just big picture here you know if you were to write a couple headlines as to how they're here how they're in the second round, how they've energized this city, how it feels like it's become a, a hockey town right now as they're making this run yeah. in the playoffs. What are a couple yeah, of the, well, the elements that you point to most specifically? I think when we spoke for the first time this season, um, we talked about the energy around the team. It yeah. sounds kind of cliche and, and, and maybe trite when you say it, but I felt it, and I'm an outsider, so I can only imagine inside the room what it felt like. So you take the guys from the first season and what they went through, and we talked about COVID and, and the startup of a franchise in a new city and all these different things. They come back, they were way different. I, I, their psychological headspace was just way different for me. And then you add the new pieces that were brought in to kind of supplement the offense. The coaching staff was reconfigured a little bit. It just hit the ground running. So they, they've they been able to take that and still play with it today, which is remarkable. And, and, you know, their, their unity, their, their, their set lineup has been in place. Luckily, not a lot of major injuries. Now, Andre Burkowski losing your leading score in January and still not having him. If you, he's in the lineup, it's even better. They're playing without McCann right now. He scored 40 goals. Uh, you know, he gets hit in that previous series, and, and it's undetermined when, when we'll see him again. Those are big misses. But if you have a, a team and a balance in place like they do, and you have experience now in the second season, oh, there's seven Stanley Cup winners on this roster. So when they drafted in the expansion draft, sure, they're second-tier guys but they're guys who are still part of, of, of winning programs, right? So you guys can relate to it. Um, you know, and Brock, you can relate to this. Like if you, if you, if you're in a part of winning, you take that with you somewhere. That doesn't go away. It's not something that you just, you know, as an athlete, they just kind of leave on the curb. Um, Yanni Gord knows how to win. I mean, he's going to drag teams and teammates and, and he's going to drag people through a playoff series to a fault till he, till he can't move anymore. It's proven. He's done it before. He's doing it now. Um, you know, this is kind of their makeup. So I think that has a lot to do with it. 
The coach deserves more credit than he's received. He's getting some now, but I think Dave has done a really good job kind of navigating this whole program for two years, getting them to play a sound uh, defensive game as they do. It's stifling. It, like, frustrates the other side. So it doesn't matter the talent level. They might lose uh, based on talent man for man, but they're not going to just lay down and let it happen. I mean, it's been proven now. They've been doing it for almost eight months. Talking to John Forsland here uh, about these Kraken as they continue their run game two tonight. Uh, you know, we can say all that, but Phil Grubauer has just also been a completely different player over the course right. of these last couple of weeks. From your perspective, what is he doing differently? Well, we're not having a conversation this morning, if not for Grubauer in game seven in the first period and throughout the game, right? So, um, you know, Colorado deserved a better fate probably in that seventh game, but that's playoff hockey. That's hockey in general. The goaltender is the X factor. You don't get anywhere without it. Um, you know, my, my, my great friend and partner, Eddie Olchek always says, if he ain't got goaltending, he ain't got, you know what, right? So uh, that's, that's kind of the way it is. And it's very simple. And, um, but I think for Grubauer, it's a, it's a tremendous story because he too went through a lot of adversity in the first year, survived it. Uh, challenged himself, refined his game a little bit. He's worked really hard with the new goalie coach, Steve Briere. He's kind of more in a refined place. He's, he's square. He's limiting rebound chances. Um, those are the things that have to continue for him. And again, for the Kraken to take the next step and get out of this series, the guy at the other end is the goods. So he's going to have to out goaltend Jake, Ot- uh, Jake Ottinger. That's going to be a big key in this uh, in determining who wins this series. Matty Benier is going to win this Calder Trophy? Yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, without a doubt. And they have, you know, Ty Cartier, who's on his line right now, had to come up from the minors because of the McCann injury. He won the American Hockey League's Rookie of the Year. And so you're going to have, I believe, two Rookies of the Year in respective leagues, and that hasn't happened in the NHL since 2010. And it's only happened, I believe, three times in history. So that's a pretty good thing. Yeah, and that kid has stepped right in. I think he doesn't even understand where he's at right now. He's just, you know, <laughs> happy to be there and contribute. I mean, I watched the overtime the other night, and they outshot Dallas 10-4, and you see 52 all over the place, making hits, forechecking, scoring chances, shooting the puck. You know, he's playing with a lot of poise for 22 and limited pro experience, so good for him. He's pretty responsible out there. It's really remarkable. How, I mean, and, and you is. can see the trust that, that Haxtell has in him. I mean, as Daniel Sprung's minutes have gone down in the playoffs, understandably, as he's you know more of a, a one-way player, the fact that this young kid who a couple of years ago went undrafted and nobody wanted him, the fact right. that he's getting these kind of minutes is nuts. Yeah, the first camp, the first training camp for the Kraken, uh, he comes in as a free agent, and they just took a flyer on him, gave him an opportunity, and he he turned some heads there, so they watched him closely in that season, and he had an unbelievable junior year. But, yeah, undrafted. He was undrafted as a junior player. He had to go into a a junior training camp just to make it as a walk-on. It happens, and uh, to the Kraken's credit, they, they saw talent there. They gave him a shot. I think uh, no no one saw this one coming. I mean, he had a good training camp, scored a goal in Vancouver in a preseason game. Uh, he left with a name that people would remember, but you put him in the, the situation in the AHL, and it was just okay for the first half of the year. He had a handful of goals. That's it. He was playing on the fourth line. He ended the season with 28 goals, and the lion's share of that was in the second half, and then you bring him up, and he scores in his first game, and it just continues. He's playing on a top line, and that has given Haxtell a chance to leave the other three lines intact, right? So that's a big key uh, with their set lineup. You just had to replace McCann with a rookie. Easier said than done, but so far so good. 